Welcome to this course on normal distribution. These are the topics covered in this module. Before we actually look at the normal distribution, let us quickly recollect the types of variables we discussed earlier. Continuous variables can take any value between its minimum and maximum value. Examples of the continuous variables include common things such as height, weight, etc. Common frequency distributions for continuous variables include normal distribution, exponential distribution, and Weibull distribution. In this course, we are covering the normal distribution. The other type of variables are the discrete variables, and those are discussed in the next slide. Unlike the continuous variables, discrete variables are those which can only assume certain fixed values. If you roll a dice, you do not get 3.45. You just get the integer numbers. Common frequency distributions for discrete variables include Poisson distribution, binomial distribution, negative binomial distribution, and hypergeometric distribution. If you draw the outcome on the x-axis, and the probability of the outcome, on the y-axis, you get the probability distribution. In case of normal distribution, this distribution curve is bell-shaped, and symmetric around the mean. Nature follows the rule of average. Most of the people have average height, weight, or IQ, but there are a few exceptions. This slide shows the mathematical representation of the normal distribution. This seems quite complex, but don't worry about that. It is not necessary for us to use this. Note that any particular normal distribution is defined by two parameters, the mean and the standard deviation. This and the next slide show the areas covered by the normal distribution curve. For example, the areas covered by the normal distribution curve between the mean and plus minus two sigmas is 95%. That means there is 95% probability that the outcome of a normally distributed event will be within the mean and plus minus two sigmas. This is the graphical representation of the normal distribution and the areas covered by the curve. Normal distribution curve depends on the mean and the standard deviation. For example, if you draw the normal distribution curve for the height of males and females, you will get two different curves. Since men are in general taller than the females, or the mean height of the two groups is different, it makes life a lot easier for us if we standardize our normal curve with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one unit. The standard normal distribution helps us in standardizing the various normal distributions. The standard normal distribution is a special normal curve made up of z-scores. A z-score is a standard score that is calculated by subtracting the mean from a value and dividing the result by the standard deviation. A z-value is used to express the number of standard deviations in the difference between the value and the mean. Let's understand the concept of standard normal distribution with the help of a few examples. If the exam marks are normally distributed and have the mean of 500 marks and the standard deviation of 50, find the probability of getting marks between 450 and 550. In this case, the mean is 500 and standard deviation of 50. 450 marks are one standard deviation less than the mean, and 550 marks are one standard deviation more than the mean. In fact, in this example, we need to find the area between plus and minus one standard deviation, which we know is 68.26%. So we can say that the probability of getting marks between 450 and 550 is 68.26 percent. Let's make some changes to the previous example. Now we want to find the probability of getting marks between 500 and 525. 
This time, we will calculate the value of Z for the two limits, that is 500, and 525. Using the formula for Z, discussed earlier, we calculated that the Z values for two ends, are 0, and 0 0.50. Having found the Z values, we can directly find the areas, from the standard normal curve table. In case of our example, the area between 0 and 0 0.50, is 0 0.1915. That means, the probability of getting marks between 500 and 525, is 0 0.1915, or 19.15%. The central limit theorem, is the foundation for many statistical procedures, including quality control charts. Simply said, if we collect the samples of the same size, from the same population, calculate the means of these samples, and draw the histogram of these means, that histogram would tend to have the bell-shaped curve. This does not depend, on the shape of the distribution of original population. The next slide, will show this, with the help of a diagram. This diagram shows, that irrespective of the original distribution, the sample means, will have the normal distribution, when the sample size is large enough. If we draw random samples, of size n, from an original distribution, the mean of the sample means, will be same as the mean of the original distribution. The standard deviation, of the sample means, will be equal to the standard deviation of the original distribution, divided by the square root of the sample size. Earlier, we said, that the central limit theorem applies, when the sample size is large. This slide gives the commonly used rule, for applying the central limit theorem. Going back to the earlier example of exam marks, here we have two distributions. The distribution on the left is the original distribution. This has a mean of 500, and the standard deviation of 50. Sample of 100 students is drawn from the original data, and a new distribution is drawn, for the sample means, on the right. The distribution of sample means, will have the same mean as 500, while the standard deviation of this new distribution, would be 50 divided by the square root of the sample size. This completes, the presentation on the normal distribution.